Yes, yes, yes. It's Raphael Dawkins with the Combat Radio. And uh, today is Wednesday. And you know what that means? You know what that means. We've received the notification and we are live. This is Ask Rick. Boxing Talk with Rafi172. Okay. So we're in good shape. And uh, who's missing? Somebody's missing. Where is he? Where is he? Boom, boom, boom. Okay. So it's the Rick Glazer. Rick Glazer, how do you? Good, today? Ralph. Glad to be back. What is this, number 23 now? 23. We're on 23 now. 23. Well, I'm learning the count anyways. <laughs> at, your, at, your, at your expense. Well, thank you. So, <laughs> ready to answer every single boxing question anybody asks me. I'm well prepared today. I, I slept for a couple of hours. My mind is all there. I was, I'm well rested. I'm ready to go. I got my mind cleared. I don't have any bad. I don't have any issue in the world today. It's a perfect world today, except for COVID. Uh, you know, President Trump and and and, and uh, Biden, you know, a lot of shit, but nothing to do directly with me. I'm ready to go, Ralph. Come on, fire ready away. To, ready to rock and roll. We're ready to rock and roll, and um, you know, it's perfect. So let's get that done. Don't right. have any issue in the world today. Boom. Okay, so that's good. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, you got in the building early in the building. <laughs> we got the the big boys boxing up in the building live and early enter the raccoon hope you gentlemen are doing well for those who don't know the raccoon is a rick glazer's nickname it is not a derogatory term i assure you okay that's my that's my nickname yep that's rick's nickname okay and so i don't know i think we're gonna get straight into it without any delay we shall not tarry, and there's so many things to go into, Rick. Uh, well, boom. Let's 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 go into the obvious before we get deeper into other subjects. Um, talk to me about the Canelo lawsuit. The Canelo lawsuit's got uh, what? It's got thrown out temporarily until yeah. It was a it was a technicality. The uh, Canelo's lawyer was so amorous, he never identified the um, the defendants. Uh, in a in a professional way, he just mentioned them. He didn't say where they're incorporated, whether they were, if they were incorporated, where they were incorporated, their addresses. He left so much out that it was so ambiguous that the judge threw it out. But here's where they're going to have to like, have a big problem. Once he refiles now, now he looks the lawsuit over, and there's a clause in the Canelo uh, in the Canelo contract. Um, Oscar, uh, I'm sorry, Golden Boy. Uh, contract with Canelo that states that it's an, uh, that any any dispute any anything goes to arbitration in the contract it was California State Athletic Commission arbitration so if that's the case the judge will will not be able to rule on that he will he will have to turn it over to the um to the state um, nine, nine, I mean there's a ninety nine percent chance he's gonna have to turn it over to the state to um to back to the uh, Canelo to take him to the state and deal with it, the State Boxing Commission. Now, that doesn't sever the part with, with the zone, uh, the lawsuit versus the zone, but that will se that will separate uh, Golden Boy and um, and Canelo, which the thing is with, 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 with promoters and, no, and, and with fighters and promoters, promotional contracts with fighters, okay, is a situation where it's very very weird because the promoter doesn't have to act in the best interest of the fighter. He does not have what they call fiduciary duty. A manager of a fighter, an agent of a fighter, or an advisor of a fighter uh, has to act in the fighter's best interest. The promoter does not have to. He may act in his own best interest. So on a technicality there, on, on the letter of the law, and the way it works is he doesn't have to have a fiduciary duty. What is what is he going to say? You lied to me in the contract? I mean, what's he going to say? Okay, he perf Oscar performed what he was supposed to perform. That's what a promotional agreement is. So I don't know what I don't wouldn't know what his dispute would be at that time. What he would be saying. 
Now that doesn't mean they they the the, um, the 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 judge can, like I said, separate the two of them. That that, that obviously is not in the in the uh, contract with between um, between the zone and Oscar. Okay, but only an Oscar with Canelo. So the judge will have that right. I believe the judge will separate that because even though he's in a higher court than that would be the state court, or a state uh, boxing commission would be a, a higher um, level of law, obviously. But if it's in the contract, it's very, very tough to get around that clause. So we'll see what happens. Okay, but I have to say that that will that it'll get thrown out again. On the Oscar, you know, on the uh, on the Golden Boy, on the Canelo versus Golden Boy part. Hello. Oh boy. Oh my bad, I was muted. Okay. okay. So, in a nutshell, in a nutshell, um, what? How, how, how are you leaning? How Which way are you uh, leaning uh, so far? Is I'm, it too, I'm, too, leaning, too I'm leaning for Oscar and I'm leaning for the zone. And the reason why I'm doing that is because uh, Canelo has never taken into consideration the, um, the, the, the climate of the world right now, the business climate of the world, the business climate of North America, the business climate of the United States. And this is what this plays into. This is where we're at right now in society. I, I don't blame, I don't blame the zone, and I don't blame uh, uh, Golden Boy at all. Go first of all, if if there's anybody to blame, it's the zone because they don't want to pay the money. It, Oscar wants to see his, see see um, see Canelo get paid, so Canelo's happy. But it's it's one of those things that I, I if I hate to say this in a negative way. But just like Ryan Garcia, Canelo is not getting the good, solid advice. Okay, no, no different, no different at all. You know, I, I always, I always look at who's paying and the more educated parties of the two, and it stands the reason that that the um the, that that the uh, the zone attorneys and the zone executives are you know highly educated and they're reacting to a situation of force mature which is unforeseen uh, circumstances you know yeah. and i you know i don't blame them not at all mm -hmm. um yeah yeah so it's an interesting one i thought that uh that his own that his own uh, legal team would be a little bit better than the Canelo legal team. I mean, they're doing this thing day in, day out. I mean, it stands to reason that they're more on the ball. But I didn't think that the Canelo side would drop the ball on the first attempt. That's a bit ridiculous. Yeah. Another thing is the, law, the the lawyers for Canelo. And, and normally you don't have one lawyer. You have a lead lawyer. You have other lawyers. And they're gonna, they look very amorous in this thing right off the bat. And it does not sit well with a federal court judge. Your local judge... Ah, he don't care, okay. But a federal court judge, the highest court, uh, guess what? Uh, they're gonna look at they're gonna look at Canelo's legal team like amateur hour. If I was him, I would have fired the lawyers and started all over again. Is what I would have done. You know, no question about it. Taking the same lawsuit, giving it to giving it to somebody else, and having them amend it and start over again. The, the funny part about it is that that with that with that state athletic commission arbit arbitration thing in there. That's another error the judge is going to flip out on. So Canelo doesn't – he's not doing too good right now as far as his lawsuit goes, even early on here. Yeah, I agree. It ain't looking too good for Canelo, kind of like they dropped the ball at the first hurdle. Um, mm -hmm. they, will, they will resubmit. They will get the paperwork properly. But if I were Canelo, I would not be very happy. I would not be very happy with them people because he had to pay those people. He had to pay those people to go to court and get it wrong. Not not realize they were dealing with a limited. Well, company. when there's when there's outright negligence like that, you don't pay them for negligence. You pay them to complete complete the fuck up. That's what they got to do. So it, it, that end will get worked out. But if I was Canelo, okay, I would ask for uh, I would fire those attorneys and start over again. If I was the attorney, hmm. I would take a backseat to another attorney right now and bring another attorney in. There's no association with that firm. And work together on that thing because 
that judge is going to look at those people like they're idiots. Not, not a good sign. It's not a good sign at all. It's not a good sign at all. And of course, Canelo, he sits out another, sits out another September. Um, I think the last September he missed was 2019, and uh, he's sitting out a whole year this time. Yeah, Rafi, I just want to let you know before you go any further, you're costing me money today. The reason why, because my my wife said to me, my, my wife was, what are we going to do? I said, well, I got the show at Rafi at 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock. She says, really? She goes, oh, good. She goes, give me the credit card. I'm going shopping. O-M-G, Rick. O-M-G. People, when, when are you going to learn from the Rafis? The Rafi School of Economics. I have two credit cards, one with money in and the other one without. That's the one you give to the lady. <laughs> you, you, you can't you can't do it when you're married. You're, you're married. It doesn't work yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, It's a bit awkward. It's a bit awkward. She's always gonna come back home. I understand. Right, I understand. right. She gotta come back and look at me like, huh? <laughs> you did that to me. You embarrassed me. You embarrassed me. Okay, so let's crack on. Um, where are we gonna go with this? We got the big boys boxing in the building. We got the Amala. Up in the building. How do you do, gentlemen? Okay, remember to get your questions in, and we are going. I'm gonna mute. I'm gonna mute. I'm gonna mute Rick for a second while I'm going through this, and then bring him back in. Where are we? So that was the first thing we looked at the Canelo situation. Again, we dealt with it extensively last week. So if anybody wants to go in depth on the Canelo, go to last week's Ask Rick. Um, today, there's a bunch of things we've got to get through. Uh, so what's the first thing? Okay. I think that should be respectable now. Where are we? Okay. So, um, on September the 19th, that's this coming weekend. We've got Jose Pedraza versus Javier Molina, super lightweight. Rick Glazer, you want to talk to us a little bit about that? Um, a throwback fight, two guys that desperately need to win to stay in position for a world title fight, two very good fighters. Uh, Pedraza is a former world champion. It's a very good fight. It's an even fight. I don't know who's going to win. I would give a slight edge to Javier Molina, slight, but, um, but Pedraza's got a lot of experience. They're both coming off big wins. And um, it's what boxing is all about. It's a, it's a, it's a throwback to the fifties and sixties. This fight, it's a real good old school fight where there doesn't, there's no title on the line. It's just two gritty guys going at it, and it's what boxing's all about. It's that even fight. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody just asked me yesterday, "Who do you like? Who's who's winning?" I, I said, "Whoever, who's ever the underdog, I like it because how come it? Because it's a dead even fight. So yeah. get the odds." Yes. So. Yes. Love the lo love the fight. Awesome. 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 Okay. So uh that's Pedroza versus Molina. Lightweight. That's on set hold on a second. There we go. Boom. That's on September. September the 19th, this coming weekend. And um also on September the 19th, but this time at the Mohegan Sun, Connecticut, is uh an Al Heyman PBC card. Uh, we got Eric. Well, actually, we got Eric St. Lubin. We can go through these one at a time if you like. Rick, what, Eric St. Lubin versus Gushe. I, I like uh, Lubin. It's uh, it's two ships crossing in the night. It's uh, one young, strong, fast buck. And uh, Lubin, who had one setback against Charlo, uh, the... the uh, the one Charlo brother, and then um, uh, Gersh has had his world title fight. He he's a U.S. Olympian. He just never rose to that level, and I think it's two ships going in opposite directions. And um, I believe that uh, the Lubin uh, will win at least a decision, maybe stop him late. Uh, he's left-handed. He's fast. He's powerful. And I, I definitely like Lubin in the fight. And I know Lubin's in tremendous shape. He's been training in uh, in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida, under the tutelage of uh, Kevin Cunningham. And I think it's uh, I think it's going to be a big victory for for Lubin and set his stages on the uh, on a world championship fight uh, again. 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. So there you have it. There you have it. Rick's playing the drums. You hear tapping. That's the Rick playing the drums, playing the bongos. I'm going to buy him a pair of bongos for Christmas, Rick. <laughs> okay. And <laughs> and uh, we got Nyanmar versus Breedy for featherweight on the same card. Um, I like Nam. I, I, I like Nam. Um, Breedy's good, but Nam is on a next level. And um, he'll be he'll he'll be good at the weight. He fought at twenty two. He'll be fighting at twenty six, and he'll be good at the weight. Breedy's a good fighter, but he's not in that on that level. So that's a story. I I I, I like Nam to win. Um, maybe stop some late, but you know if not a stoppage, definitely a decision. Throws more punches than Breedy. Breedy's never been in with top guys. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so there you go, folks. You got the, you know where to put your money now. You know where to put your money now. Okay, so, and then on that same card is Jaron Ennis versus Juan Carlos Abreu. Well, Abreu's never been stopped. And this is a, a huge step up for Jaron Ennis because he's fought such garbage in his 26 victories. But Abreu's still a C-plus fighter, B-minus fighter. So um, I would say that um, that, that uh, probably Ennis will get him out of there later in the fight. Referee stops the fight. You know, the corner don't let him come out. I don't think it's laid out. But I think it happens later in the fight. You know, like round seven and on. Yeah, so... So who you got for that, uh, Ennis? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 So there you got the picks. You got Rick's picks. Rick's picks. Rafi keeps coming up with this shiznicks. <laughs> we got Ask Rick. And within Ask Rick, we got Rick's picks. Okay. So keep coming up with it. Keep coming up with it. Okay. So um, on September the 25th in Paris, um, Promoter to be announced. <laughs> Promoter allegedly, apparently to be announced. It's a bit late in the day for them not to. Anyway, forget about that because obviously that's just they don't know who it is. But there is obviously a promoter. Uh, so we got Tony Yoka, the French heavyweight versus the, the how would you call Duapas? How would you describe Juan Duapas, Rick Glazer? Um, it's another fight, two chips passing tonight. It's the best of France over the last 10 years in the heavyweight division in, in Duapas. And now it's, uh, the new, the new upcomer, Tony Yoka. Um, a, it's another fight, two ships cross tonight. Yoka's going to, Yoka will beat him. It's just a matter of how a decision or a knockout. I could see another late stoppage, but you know, if not goes the distance, um, Yoka's on a different level. Yoka is better right now. The Duapas has ever been. Dang. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick, um, how do you rate Duapas at his best? At his at his peak? Um, uh, you know, I would say a, a B minus fighter mm -hmm. at his best. You know, he's he's just a guy, but yeah. he's but you know he 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 knows his way around the ring. He takes a good shot. He's a good solid guy, but you know he he was never capable of beating anybody. Mm -hmm. Lisa Bayless in the house. There she is. Mm -hmm. How are you? She spelled mm -hmm. Glazer with two S's. Yo, 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 ten dollars, not five dollars. Come on. <laughs> uh, hey, Rick, she's just a sign of respect. He's saying, "Hey, have another S. Have another S." <laughs> okay. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Lisa Bayless up in the area. Okay. Real uh, quick, I'll tell you a funny story about my last name. Real quick. My, yeah. I, I meet my wife. She thinks my last name is Glacier, G L I S E G L A C I E R. So yeah. when I meet her, she puts it in her phone, and, and I see how she spelled it. Says Gla Glacier. That's not how to spell my last name. She goes, I don't know how to spell Glacier. I, I, I he says I, I, I took um I took history and science in school. I used the word many times. Huh. I says no, it's G L A S C R. She goes, leave it alone. It looks better. <laughs> <laughs> Fire away. OMG. OMG. Okay, let's just take a couple of seconds out here to acknowledge the people in the chat. Um, who we got? We got the Nigel Dennis. 
We got the Jay Perez. We got the Marla. We got the big boys boxing. We got the wizard sleeves. And we have the Lisa Bale. I think it's Bale, you know. I think I've been Bales. I think I've been saying it wrong all this time. I think it's Bales. It's B A I L S. Bales. Okay. So let's get into Let's continue. Let's continue with this. We're in Rick's picks. We're in Rick's picks. I'll get to your questions in a moment, but keep them coming in. Um, we just talked about Tony Yoka versus Juan Duapas. Tony Yoka for the win there. Um, September the 25th, Tijuana, Mexico. Um, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. versus Mario Abel Cazares. I mean, Chavez is the great underachiever of our generation, but mm -hmm. he's got enough to beat, uh, beat, beat that, that guy. Yeah. Just yeah. a different level of fighter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and I can't see a guy fighter named Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. losing a decision of Mexico. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. I'm going to take him out of there. Okay, I think we'll, uh, 26, I think we'll make this. We'll do the wait 20. Till, yeah, wait till next week for that one. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. I think we, we've done it up there. But one one thing we do have to talk about, uh, mm -hmm. which is, which is, I believe, next week is, as you can see on your screen there, the September the 26th card, uh, Al Heyman's PB. <laughs> Um, Jamel Charlo. We'll do these now. We'll do these now. Just these on this card. Jamel Charlo versus Jason Rosario. Um, I, 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 it's dead even fight. If Rosario hits uh, clips uh, Charlo on the chin. It, 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 it will be. It will be night, night, night. Um, it's a great fight. I don't know who wins. I give a slight edge to Charlo. But if if um, uh, the upstart um, uh, wins, I believe you know the other champ. I believe you know it could, it's very possible. It's a it's a pretty close to even fight. Mm -hmm. I do like Charlo a little bit, but not much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, Charlo might edge Rosario. Is that what you're saying? I'm going for Rosario. So we got split. Well, I, I like I I think Rosario is capable. Yeah. But I give a slight edge as the more accomplished fighter mm -hmm. uh, to um, to Charlo. Mm -hmm. a slight mm -hmm. edge. I'm not saying he won't he he won't he won't lose, but I'm just yeah. saying a slight edge to him. Yeah, um, no, I'm Charlo and Dovinchenko. I love Dovinchenko. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and could he get robbed? Yeah, it's PBC. But in reality, it's a good it's a great fight in the ring. It's an even fight. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Luis Neri versus Aaron Almada. Almeida. Um, Neri's box is too well, he's too much fighter. The other guy is just a guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I think we'll leave that there for now. Just the top picks on that one. We'll revisit that next week when we're closer to the card. Okay, so at this point, at this point, let's go into. Let's go into the chat. Let's go into the chat and get some get some pictures from the chat. Okay, so where's the first question? Who asked the first question? Um, okay, I think that's Nigel Dennis. Okay, so Rick, what do you think of the super cruiserweight division idea? Um, well, it's not going to be – they're not using the word cruiserweight, but for the sake of the conversation. Okay, they're not going to use this. Won't be a super cruiserweight. It'll be have its own name, Warrior Weight or something. They're not sure what the name's going to be. Um, what do I think of? I think it's an excellent idea because it's a safety issue that you know a guy two hundred and five pounds, two ten, two twenty, ha um, has to you know has to fight a guy who weighs two seventy one like a Tyson Fury. You know they're going to have another weight class in between. It's long overdue. These guys are so big today. They're, they're monsters. And I think having a weight class, I would suggest the weight class be up to 230, to be honest with you. Yeah, 230, yeah. Not, not 225, 230. That was my suggestion. That makes sense. I can see that making sense. I can see that making sense for sure. Um, yeah, I like that 230. I like the 230. Okay, as we move on, um, we've got Jay Perez up in the building. Do you think the Charlo card will do good numbers. That's a great question. I was going to ask that myself. Okay, Rick Glazer. 
Um, let's talk about this. It, it's on PPV um, when it could have been on free to air. Um, you want to talk well, about? I, I, I think it does horrendously bad numbers. I think it, it financially bombs. It's. I think it. I, I don't think it has a prayer to turn a profit. Not a prayer. Mm. You know. Mm. So it's just. It's going to be a financial bloodbath. Wow. Wow. That there is- was no. Like, there was no reason to put this on pay per view. What they should have done. If they, okay, I, they're all they're wrong. What they should have done was they should have done these fights separately in separate weeks, okay, and separate shows. They could have put three fights. They, they had six fights. They could have put three on each show and done two separate shows on Showtime. There is mm-hmm. no reason to go on pay per view in this show. Now they're they're saying, well, it's an expensive show. That's why we have to no divide up the fucking fights, idiots. Don't put them out all one night. Divide up the shows. Have one show, let's say, in, in September, one show in October. And if, if you do two fights a show, you got one. You got two fights for December. I don't know what the rush uh, to put all this on one night was for. You know, um, you know, one day, night, whatever, night, day, night, double header, like a baseball game, for Christ's sake. I don't understand it. I have no clue. This, this bobs on pay-per-view. Absolutely lays a big turd. Game. Game. I, Game. I know the fights are good. I know their fights are good in, in quantity and quality. There's all they're all good fights. Don't get me wrong, okay. But if that's the case, then put them on separate shows and, and regular showtime. No reason to have this show on um, on regular on regu- on, um, on pay per view. There's none at all. There's no excuse. We're in a bad economic time. There's a there's a whole bunch of reasons not to, and the only reason is is stupidity and greed. So it, it's tough to overcome stupidity and greed. So tell me this. Let me just uh, stop the reverb there. So tell me this. Um, will each Charlo make more money as a result of the fact that this is on pay per view? Answer no. The reason why is it, it, them depending on making money it means it's over a certain threshold of buyers, and they're not going to have that threshold. So no, the answer is no. In other words, where they would get eight dollars for pay per view over so many homes, it's not going to do that. It's not going to do. If it does a hundred thousand homes, it'll be a lot. But let's just do the numbers. There's seventy five dollars a piece. That's thirty seven fifty. Okay. 100,000 homes is $3.75 million, okay? Uh, the Charlos are probably getting a million and a half a piece themselves. The, the other champions are probably getting almost close to that, that they're, that they're fighting. And, and um, Dovinchenko is probably getting that. Plus, you got all those undercard fights. Um, I, I just don't see it. I don't see where it could possibly turn a profit. Foreign TV revenues are down right now because of the fact that um, we're, you know, we're in a worldwide pandemic and, and the, the sponsors aren't there. Um, so those those are down. There's no attendance allowed. There's no commercial distribution. Bars and restaurants aren't doing any business. Nobody's going to go to a bar to watch a fight right now. They want to stay in the confines of their home. Most bars aren't even open. New York State, you, um, you can't serve you can't serve anybody unless they're having a meal. Damn. You know, the minimum meal is a sandwich. So you're just not gonna you're not gonna you know you're, you're gonna have a few sponsors, yeah. But what, you know you got to overcome all those COVID costs that eats up the sponsorship money. You know all the testing, all the protocols, the bubble, the hotel rooms, the food. I don't see it, my friend. I don't see it. Mm, mm, mm. Dame, dame. Dang. Okay. So we got one from Mala. What do you think of the cruiserweight limit bit being 210? Um, would it be a good idea? Cruiserweight? No, because it gets then it gets too far away from 175. Uh if a guy weighs 180 pounds, 185, it gets too far away from from 175. So no, that's not a good idea. They should limit it to 200 and then they should have the other division up to two, I believe 230 should be the weight, not, yeah. not 225. Mhm, mhm, mhm. Okay, so just imagine we? if you added a two thirty or two, even two twenty five, 
you <coughs> Pavekin, <coughs> you guys like Pavekin, Wilder, you know, I mean, yeah. what the facts are. Yeah, 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 100%. I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, where are we? Where are we? Duapas is a tough guy, says Jay Perez. Um, it will yeah. be a good fight. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But it is, it's, it's two ships crossing the night. Yeah. Yes. Going in opposite directions. Duapas is going down, the other mm -hmm. guy's going up. 100%. 100%. Lisa Miller says, apologies for the typo. Apologies for the typo. Rick. Well, my apologies for pronouncing your name wrong. So <laughs> there you go. We're even. We're even. Everybody's even. Um, what's this? What's this? What's this? <laughs> That's a troll. Okay, Vernon McIntosh. Nice try. Nice try indeed. Okay. So we got the red glove militant up in the area. There he is. There he is. Good man. Good man. Red Glove Militants. Good to see yes, you in, in the place to be. Uh, and where is the next question? Marla's picking both Charlos on points. Very possible. Very possible. Um, where are we? Where are we? Going to eat your words. You guys are going to eat your words. You heard it here first. Okay. Thank you very much. That's another troll. I probably the same troll, but thank you very much. Make sure everybody that you smash that like button. Okay. So another one on the cruiserweight division. Do you think they could have the cruiserweights? What do you think they could do? Cruiserweights up to two ten, make heavyweights up to two thirty, then create super heavyweight. No, they're not going to change the, of, of the biggest division in boxing, which is the heavyweight division. They're going to leave that there. That's an historic division. They're not going to change the name. They okay? I mean, um, they're going to they're they're not going to move cruiserweights up in weight. They're going to leave them at two two hundred because there's too big of a spread between one seventy five and two hundred. If you move it up to two ten, and they should just make it other division. Like I said, they're talking about two twenty five. I think it should be at two thirty. Mm. But because I, we're going to have the same problem, another no, another problem in five years with the same thing, so you might as well move it up to two thirty now, yeah, and prepare for the future. Yeah, yeah, people are getting bigger, no question about it. Um, do you have do you have FBI or anyone been able to? <laughs> uh, Nigel Dennis asks Rick, um, have the FBI or anyone been able to find Wilder yet? Well, to find somebody, they have to be lost. Wilder knows where he is, so he's yeah. not lost. He's not lost. He's not lost. That's, that's but, um, he. But uh, Wilder, I don't know what he's doing. I think he's going. I think he's he's uh, penciling in more excuses. He's got like a <laughs> yellow legal pad to come up with more mm. excuses. Mm. Mm. Well, interesting. I think we might as well get into this one now. Um, Wilder is down training, his strength and conditioning down in Florida. Um, and uh, one of his teammates, one of his teammates, where's, I hope I'm not sharing the screen, something popped up there, which is not for uh, uh, combat radio consumption. That's more for entertainment. Where are we here? Let's have a look. Uh, Deontay Wilder is apparently, um, according to Rafael Ak Ak P. Jory, um, a new up and coming heavyweight, hails from Nigeria, lives in America. According to him, uh, I think he's seven and oh, he hasn't won more than two rounds, knocked out everybody so far. Uh, according to him, Deontay Wilder is in amazing physical shape for the third Tyson Fury fight, says American heavyweight protege Rafael Ak P. Jory. Uh, apparently, he's down there in Florida and uh, doing his strength conditioning down there and apparently looking in a great shape, in, in great shape um, and uh, very, very confident, apparently or allegedly. Um, Rick Glazer, I've got to put it to you. Is it possible? Is it possible that Deontay Wilder has has a strategy to topple the Gypsy King, 
Tyson Fury? No. Because anything Wilder can do, Fury can do better. Mm. He's more, okay, more nimble, much smarter, the ring intelligence much faster. You know, just he knows his way around a ring better. The other guy has no idea how to box. He's too crude, not smooth enough. And uh, and Fury sees everything coming a mile away. It's too mm. sharp. Now, I don't I, – I give him no prayer at all. Listen, the fact that he's with a strength and conditioning coach right now at age 34, 35 years old, well, where's this guy been his whole career, uh, Wilder's whole career? Well, the fact is it'll make him last a little longer, maybe a few minutes, maybe another round. It won't make him win the fight. It'll make him last longer. That's all. Maybe you'll see round eight this time. So, so I just don't give him, I just don't give him a prayer. Well, Fury's just Fury is a complete fighter. People mm. don't want to admit this, mm. okay? Because he's British, because he's a white guy, <laughs> you know, because he's a traveler. You guess what? The fucker can fight, okay? His father he couldn't fight much. <laughs> this guy he can fight. <laughs> Omg. Okay. So, uh, but Rick, I got to put it to you. I got to put it to you. Um, Deontay Wilder got an Olympic bronze medal. So surely, surely he can box. Can't box a lick. Those wild flaring punches, those, well, he flings those. I mean, not a clue. I don't, don't go by that stat. <laughs> you know, that works in the smaller weight classes, not in the heavyweights. Mm, mm, mm. Very, very. Yeah. Or super heavyweights for that matter in the amateurs. Both both weight class. Very, very interesting. And staying on that vein, get your questions in, folks. Staying on that vein, uh, there was an interview last week with uh, Hunter, Michael Hunter, and uh, where he said that, hey, he was asked who would he like to fight in the heavyweight division. What's his, what's his top three? And he said uh, Wilder, Fury, and Joshua. Joshua, he said, he doesn't like the promotion. He doesn't like he doesn't like how the promotion will get. Joshua is a nice guy himself. Hunter's a nice guy. Um, he's got some history with with Fury, but uh, he revealed for the first time he's got some history with Wilder too. Because when they were in the amateurs training for the Olympics, um, he was sparring. Wilder was his key sparring partner. He was heavier than Wilder, and. Uh, Wilder was his key sparring partner, so he he said, "Well, Wilder knows. Wilder knows how those those sparring went, and I know how how those sparrings went." Implying that um, Hunter did very. Oh, Hunter! Hunter would outbox Wilder. Oh God, mm. I, I I I can see that. I can envision that in my brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. And, uh, Staying on Wilder for another second, uh, or WBC to be more precise. Uh, they've tried, they've, 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 let me just uh, let me just mute that over there. Yeah, they've dropped uh, Dillian White down um, and uh, moved moved who they moved in. Can't remember. But anyway, the top three for the WBC are Deontay Wilder, number one ranked. Uh, no contenders. Uh, number two, I think, is Usyk, and number three is Luis Ortiz. What do you think of that top three, Rick? It's the normal. This is as far as it goes. It's the usual stuff. I mean, they should have prevented number one. I don't know why they didn't. Mm -hmm. But now that the mandatory is not good, not available next till till till, till the day that. Uh, White got knocked out now. Yeah, that's when the mandatory is due the following year. So you don't, you don't. When you get number one like that, you inherit number one. You don't get the guy's position, the time and position. It's now yeah. a year later. Yeah, that's so true. they don't have to worry about that. They get the Fury fight with the Fury fights with Joshua off the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. it's it's a, it's a no worry now. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. I find it kind of interesting that Luis Ortiz is uh, up there in the top three. He's like an evergreen; he don't seem to go nowhere. They, they keep Luis Ortiz up there. Who who's he beat in the last three years? To warrant nobody, 
It's sad. But it's ridiculous. It's utterly, utterly ridiculous. Ridiculous. Okay. So, this one say, but Rick, would you not be worried about splitting the heavyweight division, leaving too few good fighters in each division? No, because it'll give cruiserweights the ability to move up and fight in that division and make more money in that division than they would at the cruiserweight division in that in that new division. So it, it, it'll fill the void. It, it, it'll level itself out. It'll level itself out. Um, mm -hmm. Freddie, Freddie Mars up in the building. How do you do? Uh, Philip Carl Roberts up in the building. Um, and another one from Nigel Dennis. Uh, how do you see Usyk versus Chizura going if the fight happens? Uh, Usyk by decision or a late stop, but decision, more or less decision. Good fight. Actually, a good fight. I, but I, I lean towards Usyk. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And uh, let's get into let's get into some of my questions while people in the chat think of their questions. Um, okay. So this is an interesting one. This is an interesting one. Let me stop sharing. Where is that? Let me stop sharing that and start sharing this. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. So hopefully you can see that. Let me check. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Okay. So let me just, uh, let me just control that sound element right there. Okay, we're good. Okay, so Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder 3. Plans are moving forward with December target date at the new U.S. stadium. Um, what's it called? The, the, Allegiant, the Allegiant Stadium. And there it is in Los Angeles, Las Vegas, actually. Um well, there's a picture of it. They're talking about December 19th. What is this? 65,000 capacity. Uh, I've got some views on this, got some thoughts on this. But, Rick, um, uh, give us your observations on this. Uh, it's the only place to have it. They could probably fit 20,000. They'd probably do 20,000 with the COVID conditions. And um, it just makes a lot of sense. They spread everybody out in the big, uh, in a big USA. By the way, the sixty the, the sixty five thousand figure is wrong. It's that's for football, but with boxing with with the field the, the area of the ring being much smaller than a field, they could probably get another fifteen thousand people in there. So it, it really for boxing would see eighty thousand people. Just to let you know. Yeah. Okay. I don't think, I don't, I don't think Fury Wild are going to be needing a eighty thousand seats though. Well, the second one that we could have. Use the big, much bigger stadium, but not the third. Not, not with the decisive, decisive anywhere. Wilder didn't win a second of the fight. Um, you know, didn't win a didn't win any portion of the fight. So I don't think it would need that. No, absolutely, absolutely. Now Joshua, Joshua, and Fury could use a big arena. That's for sure. Yes. No question about that one. One hundred percent. 100%. Uh, that's the Allegiant Stadium Stadium in Las Vegas. Got a capacity of um, 65,000 for football. But as you can see with the picture on your screen, obviously uh, for boxing, a lot of that field would be covered up. So it could fit, easily fit maybe another 10K in there. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay. So uh, there's that one taken care of. What have we got here? I got here. Okay, that's a good question. Um, where are we? Uh, Jay Perez asks, "Do you think Usyk would have a chance against a top heavyweight?" Of course, of course. Why wouldn't he? Mm. He's got great athletic ability. He's got a great jab. He's left-handed. He's got great footwork. He's a gold medalist in the Olympics. He's ring wise. There's no reason why why he couldn't be top heavyweights. Mm -hmm. I would have made him a pro prohibited favorite to be Wilder if Wilder is still WBC champ. Damn, damn, damn. Okay, and uh, still talking about still talking about uh, Wilder. Um, who is it? Who is it? Where's the picture? Have I got the picture? 
do I have the picture? Um, hold on, stop that, cancel that. Yeah, so over, over comes, what's his name? Matt, uh, Stewart, Sugar, Sugar Hill, Sugar Hill Stewart. Sugar Hill Stewart has come over to the UK and uh, looking talked up with Tyson Fury yet again. Um, I found it interesting, one article which I've read, can't seem to find it there at the moment, but one article which I've read where Sugar Hill says he's just come over to look at uh, Tyson Fury's new gym. But um, if the fight's three months away, surely, is he not staying over here? Are they not... Uh, yeah, well, well, I think I think he's gonna he's gonna stay there for a little while and then bring him back to America mm. and start training in the top ranked gym in Vegas probably. I yeah. think that makes the most amount of sense. Yes, yes, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, maybe it was a typo or something. I don't I don't understand, but um, he is. It seems appears that he is the head trainer for Tyson Fury again. When Tyson Fury originally took him on, we didn't know whether he's going to keep it going. But Tyson Fury is a man who likes to chop and change, change his trainers um, when he wants to change his style. So um, yeah, I think I think Sugar Hill is Sugar Hill is the guy, uh, the head trainer guy, and uh, part of their preparation is going to be over here in the UK. But I think that's all up in flux to a certain degree because there's traveling restrictions. There's not traveling restrictions, so I think Sugar Hill's come over here. So they can work out how they're going to do it. But they're starting the training camp over here. And obviously, at some point, like you say, Rick, they're going to head over to the US of A. Um, so, what are we saying now? What's the next question? Nigel Dennis says, How will Wilder survive that long stadium ring walk <laughs> without losing his legs? Okay, you got me there. You got me there. Okay, so who we got? We got Ajax 74 in the building. And um, I think AJ Marla says, what do you think about AJ, AJ and Usyk? What do you think, Rick? I, I think I think um, Joshua w would win that fight, but I think it's a hell of a fight. I don't think the fight's going to happen so fast. I think he's going to go fight uh, Fury. <laughs> Usyk will probably fight for the vacant title. And um, that all, that's how that'll work, I would think. I'm, I'm, that's what I'm thinking. But who knows? Don't mm -hmm. I don't know for sure. But I don't know what EJ's thinking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Big up yourself, Rafi. Big up yourself, Chase Athletics. Um, Rick, FA Jagba versus Jonathan, Jonathan Rice. Your I'm not high on a Jagba. And I hope uh, K. Karoma's new trainer... Uh, bring him to a much higher level than Ron, Ronnie Shields did because he can't beat anybody at the high level. Mm -hmm. But um, Jonathan Rice is just a journeyman mm -hmm. type of fighter. So he's not going to beat – he shouldn't beat uh, a Jagba. But a Jagba needs help. There's mm -hmm. no question about that. Mm hmm Yes. 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 And um, have, have they got the picture? Have they got the picture of him? Oh, no. Let's hope, let's hope not. <laughs> no, the next story. Oh yeah, oh, awesome, awesome. Got to show you this. Let me just, uh, let me just kill Rick's mic there for a little second, and uh, got to show you this. Boom, boom, boom. Um, do you recognize that guy, Rick? Do you recognize that guy, Chris Bird? <laughs> Okay, so Chris Bird, I think at 50 years of age, um, turned, turned he, he, diet he was around. knocked out in his last fight at 175 pounds when he fought. He's done. He's done. He's he, he, and that was 13 years ago. Um, he's done. The no sense we've been talking about it. That guy should not be fighting, and we and we shouldn't um, encourage him. Pontificate on you know and, and, and embellish anything this guy does. He sh should be retired. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I he, and he lost his wife. He, she's uh, she left him. I think he's delusional. And oh. let, let's just move on. Okay, okay. Let's move on. Let's not let's not uh, tarry on that one. Um, where are we? Where are we? 
Uh, okay. What was the question there? Raph, I asked if uh, Jose Cuevas um, is Pepino's son and is he the goods? Do you know, I don't know. Do you know, do you know, yeah, I have no idea. Don't know no, that no. one. Don't know that one. Uh, no. Nope. Um, okay, this is a big topic. This is a hot topic. Uh, who wins? Boatsy versus Yard. Boatsy wins. Yeah, yeah. Boatsy, the Olympian. The Olympian uh, versus Yard. They're not going to be fighting anyways, but um, they won't be fighting, at least not for a while. Um, you know, uh, Yari's going to fight uh, Landon, uh, whatever yeah. his name is. Yeah. Landon, or, you know, whatever that guy's name is. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's the next fight for uh, Yari, it looks like, as long as there's no COVID, as long as you can get a few fans in there. Um, yeah. You know, Boatsy's a good fighter, but you know Wilder. I mean, I mean uh, Yardy isn't much. He's another Wilder. He can punch, but he can't box, mm -hmm. and he has, he has no technique at all. So no, he's a no, he's a light heavyweight version of Wilder. Damn, damn, damn! Um, you heard it here, folks. You you heard it here, folks. Yardy is a light heavyweight version of Wilder. O M G. Um, Jay Perez says, all these old fighters making comebacks, when will it end? When will it end? I I don't know. I, I, I don't want anything to do with it. It, it, yeah, I, it just makes no sense to me at all, except for financial desperation. That's not a reason to uh, have a guy get hit in the head. Yeah, yeah. Um, getting hit in the head at that age, at any age isn't good at that age, definitely Definitely not good at all. Um, so that's Chris Bird. Um, who else we got here? We got Thurman, once Pacquiao, Crawford, Brooke Porter, and Mikey Garcia. What's going on with Thurman? He just he, he, he's he's ridiculous. His, his money demands are ridiculous. That's why he's not going to be fighting. He's not fighting. What's his name? He's not going to be fighting uh, uh, Crawford because he wants to ridiculous money. Maybe Heyman will pay him that money, but I don't know anybody else will. Mm, yeah, I don't know if anybody's going to pay him that money. Um, Spent waiting for Crawford. Making a mistake. Uh, Sa Saunders. Okay. Saunders says, I wasted months on Canelo Alvarez. He wasted my time. Well, he can say what he wants, but he's still he's the one looking for the payday. So no, you know nobody's nobody's killing their, killing themselves for that fight. So you know that's that's nobody's fault but his. Yes, yes, yes. Nobody's fault but his. Nobody's fault but his. Okay, what's going on here? Kieran bets up in the building. What's good, Rafi? What's good, Rick? Thanks for the time, as always. Excellent day. Excellent day. Um, where are we now? Um, okay, so yeah, we got to talk about this again. I think we talked about it last week. Got to talk about this again. Um, Devin Haney is uh, is waiting. De it's, Devin it's, Haney. It, it, it's a waste. The fight game, Boa. Then he, you know, I remember I told you that there is no way that Russell takes that fight. Even yeah. if they meet his financial demands, what did I tell you? Remember I told you that? You told me that. You told me that. Right again. Mm, mm, mm. So he's just wasting, Russell's wasting people's time. Of course. Is that what he, like, like he was going to fight Crawford. Get out of here. He's just trying to keep his name out there. And, and, and there's nothing to keep out there. He's got no name. Mm, 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 mm. You know, Thurman's doing the same thing, but Thurman's got a name. Yeah. Yeah. He just wants he just wants too much to get executed by somebody good. Damn. 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 Okay. So Luis Ritson um defends against Miguel Vasquez on October the seventeenth, the zone and sky. Yeah, I don't know that much about Vasquez, but Ritson's a pretty solid guy. Yeah. So I, I would say Ritson wins. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um What's going on here? Chocolatito versus Gonzalez. Um, Chocolatito wins. 
Yeah, so what's the story with Chocolatito? There was some story about um, him wanting a million and he, they wouldn't give him a million. There was some kind of story a few weeks back. Well, he wanted so, a million dollars to fight a big name guy. I, if he's fighting now uh, you know, against a, a no name guy, then uh, you know he took less than a million bucks, but they're satisfying him to fight. So maybe he's getting six or seven hundred thousand, but he's not fighting a big name guy or a unification belt. Mm -hmm. So they, it's, it's 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 nothing more than a compromise. Yeah, you know, people do compromise. Okay, you don't want to pay me a million, then I'm not fighting Estrada. I'm not fighting this guy. I'm not fighting, but. I, Okay, well, what will you fight for? Well, well who's the guy? Okay, yeah. this is the guy. Okay, I'll, how much will you give me for him? Okay, I'll take that. You know, they need to negotiate a little bit, and they got a deal. Boom. That's what it is. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so since Russell, since Gary Russell Jr. Uh, don't seem to be in any kind of rush to put his name on a contract to fight Devin Haney, although he talked about it a lot, um, it looks likely that Devin Haney will be fighting Yorkis Gamboa. What did I always? What have I always told you since the first day I've been on your show? You, what did I tell you? I told you it's a long way from the lip to the ring. Don't ever yeah. forget that. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. And uh, damn, I almost forgot this one. Uh, Terence Crawford versus Kel Brook, possible for November fourteenth. Discuss. <laughs> It's it's gonna happen. Um, what do I think? I, I can't see Kel Brook be able to make that weight safely. That's mm -hmm. a lot. It's it's you know he's you know he he's a big thick guy and he, he had trouble making the weight in, in his last years when he was forty seven. Now he's been inactive, had a fight at fifty four. Is mm -hmm. that trying to shed that last seven pounds is gonna be really hard. It'll it'll weaken him greatly. Um, he's on the back nine heading towards the clubhouse, and Kel Br and uh, Cropper will put him in the clubhouse. Dime, dime, dime. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, Crawford, Crawford's a champ, Crawford's doing his thing. You know, Kel Brooks been out now for how long? Hasn't really been totally active. For well, he, I mean, he fought Mark Leduca not too long ago, but you know, Mark Leduca is Mark Leduca, yeah, you know. A yeah. very forget about uh, for, uh, I don't even know if it's Laduca or Deluca, but I know which one it is. But it's a very forgettable guy. Now you're talking about um, Crawford, you know, the great of our era right now. You know, the, uh, the you know Mayweather may have been great, but he hasn't fought in really five years. Mm. So you know, let's not count some MMA guy and some guy over in Japan. Hmm. Um, some kickboxer. So in reality, he hasn't fought in five years. And you know, Crawford's the best of our right now. This era. So mm -hmm. I don't. I it doesn't. It doesn't have a happy ending for Cal Brook unless you unless you figure out about how much money you're going to pick up on a paycheck. Yeah, I hope he doesn't. I hope he doesn't shatter his orbital bone again. You know what I mean, he's already shattered. Well, that's a real possibility. He'll shatter a lot of shit. His ego, his pride. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, M G. OMG, Rick taking no prisoners, and Lisa Bayless comes through with another. Lisa Bayless, super chat dominator, um, says Rick. He's, he, he's, he, he would be undisputed. Forget about the WGC belt that Dahaney has. It, it, everybody knows who the real champ is, that it's, that's, that it's Loma. So no issues there. He'll be considered undisputed. Okay, I got to read the question, though, for people who are just listening or driving the cars, et cetera. So they're just listening to it on, on uh, visuals. Uh, the question was, Rick, will the Loma versus T.O. fight be considered undisputed? Uh, franchise just model models the waters for me. Yeah, uh, it does model the waters. But I think uh, I read earlier, and like Rick says as well, yes, that uh, that will be looked at as an undisputed fight. Whoever wins that will be undisputed. But yeah, Rick, the, the franchise, the franchise... The French fries guys around. Does that muddy the waters a little bit? Does it what I'm sorry? Does the French fry guys, the franchise French fry guy, does that muddy the waters a little bit? Um, um, no, nah. nah, not really. Now nah, everybody knows he's got all, all the other belts except the uh the, he had he had the other belt. He he, he said, Okay, Haney, you're not ready for me. I don't need this fight. You know, you don't bring anything to the table. And um, he said, here, you take that belt, you know, they'll franchise me, and I'll go on to fight uh, um, Tia Fimo. I mean, you don't hear you don't hear Haney yelling to fight Loma uh, or uh, Tia Fimo, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's what reality is. 
you know? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Jay Perez, uh, Estrada versus Chocolatito. If it happens, who you got? Estrada, too fresh. Too fresh, too fresh. Um, Chocolatito's Chuck on the back nine, even though he, he beat he beat Yaffe. He's yeah. on the back nine. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but that, but you asked me that fight week again. Maybe I find something else about Estrada. I don't like he's down in the deck and sparring. Mm -hmm. You know, who knows? But right now, if you ask me, I would like. Um, if they were fighting this weekend. I like Estrada. Estrada, yeah. Okay. Uh, another one from Jay Perez. He keeps them coming. Uh, Cal Brook. A, yep. Oh, I'm sorry. Cal Brook is a case of bad career decision. Uh, could have done much better. Yes, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Not even. Not even. Not even a question. Yeah. 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 Instead uh, of fighting, instead of fighting when he had the IBF belt, instead of fighting um, uh, GGG to over the weight, he should have lured another champion over there with big money because he was drawing big money on TV and big money uh, in the arena. He could have lured another champ, had two titles. Spence becomes number one, hand Spence that belt mm -hmm. and say, okay, I don't, I don't need to fight you. So then he wouldn't have lost to GGG because he wouldn't have fought him and then he wouldn't have had to fight Spence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know, Eddie, you know, Eddie. You remember something? Eddie was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Huh. You remember that? That's all part of this. Uh, all these career decisions by these fighters make because of Eddie's influence. Mm -hmm. Eddie never started at the ground, at the base, at the business. Mm -hmm. Okay, I started in the base of the business. I were, you know, the first couple of years I worked cut from ninety one to ninety three. I worked corners and cuts. And I still did. I still did my my white collar part of my business. But you know, I was in on the ground floor. This yeah. guy started out in the ivory tower. It, it, no. It's you know, yeah. now he's playing with live people's lives and livelihoods when he's never had to worry about turning a buck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His father is close to a billionaire. You know, um, his his Barry was a Hall of Famer in boxing and everything. So I, you know. I have respect for Eddie as a promoter in the UK, but he's done not done a great job over here. Mm. He should have never had him fight Ruiz. I, I sent him a letter asking him to fight Tre uh, Trevor Bryan. Yeah. Called up Don King. He never discussed a figure. Damn. So Damn. He called Damn. up Don within an hour of receiving my letter. Don mm -hmm. told me so. But mm -hmm. in the meantime, you know, he just makes too many mistakes. He plays with other people's lives and livelihoods. But he doesn't have the expertise to do so. He's not a boxing guy. He's a promoter. Bob Aram's not a boxing guy, but he's more of a boxing guy than Eddie Hearn. He's a promoter. Mm -hmm. Boxing guys are Bruce Trampler, who works there, Brad Goodman, a guy named Sean Gibbons, myself, Don Majeski, Russell Peltz. We're boxing guys. Yeah. yeah. I, I kind of see that with some of the decisions. I see that with, with the Kel Brook decision. I see that with uh, the Povetkin decision. Um, Povetkin versus White, to me, that was just totally unnecessary. <laughs> it was totally unnecessary. White was already guaranteed. Uh, me, me. Right, you're already guaranteed. I would have brought in Humpty Dumpty. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It was unnecessary. It was a totally unnecessary risk. Um, everything's a risk, but, you know, that's, that's too much of a risk. That was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Uh, so even though... You know, I'm glad that we do have Eddie making these fights. I think the fact that he didn't come up from the ground floor, I think that makes a difference. Okay, so where are we? Um, there's another title out there, though, so it can't be undisputed, really. Well, it's been considered undisputed. It's, it's been considered undisputed because because most people don't feel uh, Devin Haney's uh, a legitimate champion. Well, they call him the email champ over here because he won his title by email. Mm -hmm. But re in reality, he's a good fighter, but he was not ready for Lomachenko. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I, you know, I started out thinking the fight was even between Lomachenko and, and Tiafimo, but I don't believe that anymore. I, I, I think that they, I think we're going to see closer to, not going to see the identical fight, that he'll just completely beat the shit out of him. Wow. But I really believe that Loma's going to beat him based on Calzaghe versus Jeff Lacey. Right. I think it's pretty close, a pretty close fight as far as the, the type of similarities of the two fights. Yeah, it's a tough one to pick. It's a tough one to pick. Um, I, I, hear, 
I hear what you're saying. I picked against Tiafimo. Let me just take care of that feedback there. I picked against, I picked against, I picked Kwame uh, over Tio. And that's just what makes me a little bit resistant. It makes me a little bit reluctant to, to, to pick against him again, too. I don't want to get it too wrong two times in a row. I don't want to get it wrong two times in a row. That's why, that's why I, I, I struggle with that one. But I hear what you say. Uh, me, what I'll say is um, T.O. by K.O. or T.K.O. Um, early um, before the sixth. And if it goes after six, then i got Lomachenko win. Well, I'm glad you're flip-flopping. <laughs> O.M.G. Uh, Frank the French is up in the Bill Din. Uh, can you ask Rick how he thinks White versus Povetkin 2 will go down? <laughs> you know, I, it's a funny thing. You don't know what the state of mind is, White. I think the fight's too fast. Comes back, it's coming back too fast, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna give I'm gonna give uh, Povetkin a big edge there. If the fight was longer down the road, like not not in November, it was in uh, let's say two months later in late January, I'd give the edge to uh, to White. But I think it's too early. Uh, he was concussed. I mean, he I, I you know he wasn't sparkled as he says, but we all know he was sparkled. And I mean, he was winning the fight until he got stopped, but that stoppage is going to have a lot of mental wear on him. Uh, and that's all emotional wear on him. And I don't think he's going to get off it like he did in the first fight with those punches because he, he was sparked out, no matter yeah. what he says. And I think it's going to have a leading effect on him mentally that he's not going to step in with the power punches. Mm -hmm. And I think that the Pavekin's going to see the lack of bravery. Mm -hmm. And I think he's going to step in behind some powerful shots and, and, and take it to him more this time than the first time. Don't forget. But I don't, I'm not going to tell you, Pavekin had a lot of confidence going into the first fight, but he did have a lot of confidence now. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I, I like Pavekin in the rematch in, in the ring. Does he get a decision in England? I don't know. But I, I really like Pavekin in, 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 uh, to, to win this time. You know, I, I can see I can see that happening. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I was leaning toward I, – I, I said I – said let me sort this. Let me sort that. Uh, cancel that. Let me sort that out there, and let me share. Let me share this with you. Um, boom. Let's see. Boom. Boom. Let's see how that's figuring up on the screen. Let's take that down a little bit. Okay. Um, so Frampton. I don't know if you know about this, Rick. Or I'll talk about this for a couple of minutes. Uh, hold on. Hold on a second. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if you know about this too much. Uh, Frampton um, is in court, taken to court by Barry McGuigan. Of course, Frampton was fighting under the Cyclone umbrella, um, but he felt that they were taking too much money from him, and uh, he switched over. Um, I think he's with MTK. Yeah, switched over to MTK. And, uh, yeah, he's looking to – he's facing claims of over – near of nearly £4 million uh, for leaving Cyclone, leaving Barry McGuigan. Barry McGuigan said he, uh, he's in breach of contract. So we've got another boxer in the press uh, and in the courts, Rick Glazer. Do you, have you followed this at all or no? Yeah, I, I have. Um, I have – tell you why I have a problem with it. In any kind of contract in boxing, mm -hmm. um, um, in, in any kind of uh, boxing contract, it'll say clearly in there that um, that the that the man that the fighter is responsible for his own taxes and his own expenses, uh, unrelated to the promoter or the manager. So, what well, he said, he owed a tax bill. He was upset. Well, he he. he What's that got to do with Barry McGuigan? He, you, he pays you, and then you pay your taxes. That's the way a contract works. So yeah. he was mad at the, he was mad at uh, Barry. He was mad at Barry McGuigan. I like Carl Frampton, but that's that's pretty lame to me. Mm. Yeah. Yes. 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 
and um, Barry McGuigan is kind of Barry McGuigan is kind of up the ante. He's up the ante by mentioning mentioning uh, what's his name, Daniel Kahn. Daniel, um, you know, I don't, I don't see where that's that's relevant. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, you know, I, you know, if he was suing Daniel Kahn. <laughs> For yeah. torturous interference or something like that, then it would be relevant. Where Daniel Kanan fits into this thing legally, he doesn't. So if he's not in it legally, why mention it? Mm -hmm. And so, so he's involved with. Uh, so his so his advisor is Daniel Kanan. So what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, McGuigan is saying McGuigan is alleging that uh, Keenahan is a. What did you say? What does he say? He made a quote. He made a quote that uh, he believes that uh, Keenahan, Keenahan's involvement in boxing is no good. He can, say, he can say what he wants, but I, 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 I've heard people that have dealt with MTK, have dealt with him, and nobody's complaining. I don't get it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. I have to add, I have to add uh, that we've had I've had people, I've heard people, we've had Spencer Fear on here and uh, singing the praises of Daniel Keenahan. Um, so it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. There's allegations against his, uh, his activities. But, you know, we have to say that uh, I haven't really heard any complaints. I've got to be honest about it. I ain't really heard no complaints. Rick Laser. I mean, I he's hired the top guys. He's hired the uh... He hired uh, Bob Yalen from the United States to run MTK. Mm. He um, he's he's running the company now. He's leads the promoter. Um, he's hired top people. I mean, you, what can you say bad about the guy? The guy's brought good people in to run the company on a, on a daily basis. Mm. You can't, you know, he's not trying to run the company from from um, where is he Dubai or something like that. He's not yeah, trying Dubai. to run the company from there. He's got top guys running the company daily. So yeah. I, I don't see what he's done wrong. To be honest mm -hmm. with you. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, next question: What should Crawford do at this point? Seems his career is stalling now, and he's getting up there in age. Good question. What, what should he do as far as what goes? He should uh, go. Right. With, he, should, he should fight Cal Brook and let the PBC fighters keep saying he's on the wrong side of the street because they're scared to fight him. If he was on that side of the street, they wouldn't fight him. How's that one? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So he's in, he's in between a rock and a hard place. All he can no, do. He's, not, he's getting four to five million a fight to fight yeah. whoever he wants, minimum. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why is he between a rock and a hard place? He fights twice here, picking up, picking up, let's say, four million in one fight, five million in another fight. Yeah. That's nine million a year. Yeah. What's wrong with that? He's 30. He's, um, He's 34. 33, 34 years old. He's yeah. 36 and 0. Four yeah. more fights, he'll be 40 and 0 in two years. He'll mm -hmm. be 36, 30, 35, 36 years old. What's yeah. he done wrong? I don't mm -hmm. understand that. I, what, what's everybody complaining about? Mm -hmm. okay. Al Heyman, he, uh, Mikey Garcia went there. He got beat uh, with uh, with PBC by Spence. What is you know, uh, Keith Thurman just lost to a 40 year old in mm -hmm. uh, in um, in uh, in uh, Pacquiao. Yeah. What what is what is what is Crawford doing wrong? The PBC guys won't fight him. Yeah. If they if he was on the same side of the street as they were, he was with PBC. They still wouldn't fight him. Mm, mm, mm. Um, that's gonna have an impact though. It's gonna have an impact on his on his legacy when he looked when it, it was he, 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 was, a, he was a lightweight champ. He was undisputed junior welterweight champ. He could leave the game 42-0, 44-0, with a barrel of money. He's a surefire Hall of Famer. I'm a voter. He gets my vote, first ballot uh, eligible. And the legacy, okay, he doesn't have a me mega-defining win. Okay, mm. he doesn't have a mega-defining win. Mm. Kelzaki, Kelzaki, as great as he was, he had mega-defining wins, and people say he fought nobody. Mm. So how do you you can't you can't go by what people say? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Can't go by. How many times you hear on your show, Kalzagi never fought anybody? Yeah. Oh, I hear. he fought Kessler, undefeated. Fought um, 
um, uh, Jeff Lacey, fought everybody who he could fight. Mm. Okay? Mm. What what did he do wrong? He was the best of his era. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But people say he never fought anybody. You, you can never satisfy the masses. You got to you got to satisfy the professional critics. Yeah. 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 So Jeff Horn um is being pressured into retirement following his last two to 100% should be retired. 100%. Mm. Yeah. Not even a question in my mind. Well, what else has he got to achieve? I mean, he's got his 3 and 3 in his last six fights. I mean, the writing's on the wall. The writing is on the wall. Um, Rosario says Charlo is definitely stronger than J. Rock Williams. Thus, oh, yeah. Rosario, oh, yeah. Rosario is true. pairing. That's true. That's true. 100%. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Um, Teofimo Lopez says the fight is huge for boxing. I'm going to make history. It's, it is huge for boxing this year. It's as good as it gets this year. I agree with that 100%. Um, well, you know, will he make history? I don't see it, but he, he could. He's got power. He could. He's got power. He could do I'm it. Not gonna rule, I'm not going to rule him out. He's strong, he's young, and he's got power. So mm -hmm. you can't rule him out. But I, the, the experience, the quickness, the savvy, left-handed, um, the feet, Every, all that, all all those, all those uh, uh, intangibles, uh, all favor, um, uh, including the big time experience, all all favor Loma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Patrick Texera says after Castano, I want to unify all of the titles at one five four. That probably won't happen. <laughs> OMG, OMG. So he's not going to beat. Uh, he's not going to beat. Um, what is it? No, he might beat Castano, but he's not going to be able to unify the title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that have, won't happen. Yeah, because he'd have to go through. He'll be fed. He'll be fed to like a, a Tim uh, Zoo. He'll be fed to a Crawford if he wants to move up to fifty four. Mm. That's what's going to happen with, with that. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. A lot of people to get through. One five four is pretty tough, right about now. Um, where, are we, where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? What are we doing? Where are we here? Um, Gusha, Gusha. If I hurt Eric St. Lu Eric Lubin, Eric St. Lubin, I will look to get him out of there. He's never got anybody else out of there. That, that, that was good. Well, now it's going to start now? Mm, mm, mm. Not happening. Not happening. Big ask. Big ask. Big ask. Okay. So what we got here? We got here. We've done the Texera one. We got the – what we got? Oh, we talked about Deontay Wilder's alleged amazing physical condition already. Ah, this one looks like a nice one. Um, Showtime Steven Espinosa says if Canelo becomes available, we will be very aggressive in our attempts to sign him. Good luck. Ha. Ha. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. Um, but I think Oscar, whether he gets free from the zone or not, Oscar will be his promoter. Let's see if he. You know, he he's probably talking out his ass that he's with Al Heyman, but he'll probably still be with 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 Espino, with um, with Golden Boy. So with mm -hmm. Golden Boy, let's see, him try, let's see him do business with Oscar. We'll see, we'll see if that happens. Mm hmm, mm hmm. That would be very interesting indeed. Uh, Miguel Mariaga, he plans to fight on. He feels that he was overtrained. Um, I would agree with that. He was overtrained. He was in three training camps because um. The two other fights got canceled and he didn't fight. Um, I would agree with that. I would agree that on his best day, he still wouldn't have beat Jose and Joe Gonzalez because of the styles. Mm -hmm. Joe Gonzalez is good on his feet. He's got flashy hand speed, jumps in and out. And I don't think on his best day, my ogre would have beat a uh, Mariaga would have beat him anyways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he may have been flat, but that wouldn't matter. 
wouldn't have mattered wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. okay let's go over to let's go over to the chat see what's going on over there so what's going on over there um yeah we've already talked about chisora versus usik uh heinrich yeah. so uh, go back go back later on catch the replay and catch up on that one um i think white gets sparked by pavetkin anything's possible one of them's going to get sparked that much that much we know for sure um no 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 white's not going to get sparkled again he wants to sparkle the first time <laughs> okay aaron daly up in the building say shout out to legends raf and rick thank oh, you thank you, very much, thank you. Thank very you very nice much. to say very nice, very nice, very nice, very nice. This is a good question from Heinrich Smith. Um, Usyk versus Povetkin. Who you got? Um, it's a great fight, but I'll, I'll, I'm only going to take Usyk because he's uh, he's much younger mm -hmm. and um, he's left-handed and stuff like that, um, the intangibles. But in prime for prime, Povetkin would have beaten Usyk. Prime for prime. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, that's a good one. So, note that down. Prime for prime, uh, Povetkin beats Usyk, and uh, I have to say, I have to say, I agree. Okay, so Chris Eubank Jr. Uh, says, I don't see any danger in what Jamal Charlo brings. I don't think he's wrong. <laughs> I don't think he's wrong. I mean, I, I'm not. A, I'm not a Charlo believer. Mm, mm. I'm just. I'm just not a Charlo believer. They fought a lot of a lot of ducks, and um, a lot of you know a lot of crap. And I'm just not a Charlo believer in either of them. Mm, yeah, yeah. I mean, they've been in the business now for ten. They've been pros for ten years now, Rick. I know. Ten long years and still not pay per view attractions. And, 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 and we've all had to suffer because of it. <laughs> <laughs> so hold on a second. What? What? How were they brought along wrong? How, were they brought along wrong? Don't have a promoter. Mm. Who's the mouthpiece for the Charlos? You yeah. don't have Don King, Bob Arum. You know the mouthpiece. Heyman doesn't talk to the press. He's really the promoter. Mm. Yeah. So he's a promoter who don't promote. Right. Public. Public. Right, well, he is promoted. He's just he's he's, yeah. but he's not a front guy. He's a yeah. quality. The front guy's a quality guy, but he's not a barker. You need a barker. Yes. You need somebody to get out there and get him on the late night talk shows, like King and Aaron did with their fighters over the years. You need to do all those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're just not, you know, you know, uh, coin tosses at football games on the sidelines. They're just not. They've never promoted these schmucks. These two guys. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame. They got a promoter who don't promote public, and, and, and then they got the Lions boxing, the LDBC. I mean, as their biggest fan club, they're, they're their fan club. Yeah. And like I said, well, that, that pay per view is seventy five hours. You're going to put twenty people in the room, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know twenty five people in the room, and ask them for a dollar a quarter a piece. <laughs> oh, M G. So since you mentioned, since you mentioned. Uh, the USA. I'm sorry. I said there are 50 people and asked for a dollar and a quarter a piece. But anyways, <laughs> that, it's it's just you know what? They're not pay per view fighters. Mm -hmm. So you know, the, let me tell you something about pay per view fighter. Pay per view fighters have to have a foil on the other side that has to be a well known name to the public. That's why Ray Leonard and Duran did huge numbers. Hearns Leonard did huge numbers. That's why um, Lennox Lewis, Mike Tyson did huge numbers. Um, the, that's why Mayweather and Canelo did huge numbers. Mayweather and Oscar did huge numbers because it's name value on both sides. Nobody knows um, Jerson. Uh, what's his yeah. last name? Rosario. What's his last name? Rosario. Jason. See what I'm saying? I'm just kidding you. Of course, oh. I know what it is. Oh. But I get nobody, you. nobody really knows him. Okay, nobody knows Dovinchenko, but a good opponent. Dovinchenko's never won a big fight in his life. Mm. But he's a great opponent. Yeah. He's a name opponent. But that's not drawing the general public. That's drawing boxing fans. Yeah. You need yeah. more when you to be a draw on pay-per-view, you need a, a woman who sit is at home 
and calls up her boyfriend and says, listen, I'm going to put the pay-per-view on tonight. You want to come over? I want to buy the pay-per-view. You want to come over and watch it? Okay, that's, that's the general sports fans you need. And those guys are not drawing general sports fans. you got to be a diehard boxing fan. What do they need to do mm-hmm. different? What do they need to do different? Best we, know, we talked about the problem. What's the solution? Well, it's a combination of that they that they should be on Fox, yeah. um, not even on Showtime. They should be on Fox or ESPN where you get the exposure, mm-hmm. okay, and um, where the masses will watch and stuff like that. And it's just nothing that they've done, nothing that's been done right right behind the scenes for those guys to promote them. In other words, another thing, the gold hair doesn't make it, and all this fancy outfits don't make it anymore. I mean, they they got to tune it down. They're a little they're a little too rambunctious for the general public, and that's another issue. You know, the Mike Tyson era is over. Hmm. You know, from years ago, how he used to act. You know, the Charles got to be a little more humble now. Uh, the Lions Den and you know bullshit. Lions Den, they never fought nobody. Hmm. Mm, mm. They're the lion's den with no lions. Dang, toothless lions. Yep. So, so read me this. Why didn't um, Why didn't Jamal ever fight uh, Canelo? For that, for why? Because because he had a, when he, as soon as he hears Canelo's names, he gets a shortage of the nuts. Mm. Shortage of the nuts, and apparently, according to Delahoy, you put the price asking price. Yeah. What? Well, that's how. That's how you get out of it. You price yourself out. If you want to fight, you don't price yourself out. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Put the no, it's, just, it, 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 it's, it's, it, it's like a hooker. If she tells you, th- well, you, Rafi, I can't go for it. You're not a normal, regular guy. If she tells you a 1,000, you ain't doing anything. If she tells you 250, you're thinking about it. Well, <laughs> the same thing. OMG. Oh, M G. Rick don't believe in the old-fashioned ways of going to a bar and meeting a lady and giving her a rose. Oh, I definitely do. I I, 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 I went to a steakhouse. I I absolutely do. I went to a steakhouse, met my wife. I listen. I'm great picking up women, my friend. I'm okay. the greatest. I got more lines. I got more lines. I got I got the gift of gab. I'm a little short guy, five eight and a half, forty pounds overweight, and. But you know what? I look nice. I present myself nice. I dress nice, and I have a great rap. Hey. So you know, no, you- I don't need. I only use hookers because you can. You can always compare it because it's the. It was the first profession. You yeah. know, fighting was the second one. So I you always you. got something to compare it to. I get you. I get you. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. I hear Rap, what you got. Twenty minutes to go. Move this show along. You're you're you're, you're minus two on the question today compared to last week. I'm keeping track. I got a little powder here. <laughs> Rick's got his clicker. Rick's clicking his clicker. So if you hear any clicking sounds, it's Rick's clicker. Okay. So, uh, Raf, your channel is getting better and better. And better and better. Well, that's nice of you, Heinrich. Don't be afraid to don't be afraid to drop something in the super chat, Kitty. Much appreciated. Okay, um, where are we? Anyway, let me get. Hold on, Jamal Charlo. You have already talked about him. Okay, so Pedraza says I'm fighting more often with top rank. This is how I like my career to go. Well, he was a side a side a side show. It didn't mean anything at uh, at PBC, and that's why Top Ranks is successful. This is a typical example: activity, He's fighting all the time. Yeah, yeah. That's well, why he's supposed why, to be. Why couldn't he do that over at PBC? Because they have too many fighters, not enough to TV slots and, t- and dates, and, and they can't pay him what Top Rank can pay him because he's not on TV. He's an undercard afterthought because they have uh, too many fighters. Damn. Damn, damn, an embarrassment of riches when it comes to fighters, but they can't do nothing, can't do enough with them because they got too many. Damn. Right. Okay. okay. So, John. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. F.A. Jagba aims to impress in his top rank debut in Las Vegas. Yeah, we already talked about this, but he, you know what? He better get better with Craig. Uh, um, K. Karoma, because you know, I care yeah. trainers like uh, Ronnie Fields is 
either this guy was so bad and Ronnie got him to this level or this guy just never improved. I don't know. But, you know, to get to the big money fights and be able to win the, be capable of winning those big money fights. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so Povetkin White rematch has been announced as a PPV headliner on November the 21st. Is that too soon, Rick? Absolutely. Yeah, we we talked about this earlier. Absolutely. Oh, oh, we talked oh, about that earlier. That's fine. That's fine. I'm scrolling down. Um, we also already talked about Deontay Wilder. What did you say? Remaining at WBC number one. Um, I want to find the list, though. I want to find the list. I want to see who's two, three, four, and five. Is it going to tell me? Um, in the WBC's latest rankings, White has fallen out fallen to number five position. Um, Andy Ruiz is at four. Luis Ortiz is at three. Alexander Usyk at two. And Deontay Wilder at one. We've already questioned why the hell, how the hell is Luis Ortiz? What, what's Luis to Ortiz doing there at number three is beyond my comprehension. I don't know. Uh, you, you you can't you can't go by you can't go by these organizations you you, you never know what, what you don't you never know what the reasoning is um mm. for these organizations yeah you never can tell you never can tell you never can tell and okay those that comes to the end of the questions that i wanted to ask so we're going to the chat uh oh why did rick just disappear rick just disappeared well, we ain't finished yet. What's going on? Is it time for Rick? Is it time for your dinner? Are we cut? Oh, dang, dang, dang! I thought. Okay, Rick is back. What did I tell you? I told you to come back. I told you to come back. Okay, so my questions. I've asked all the questions I want to ask. We go to the chat now, and uh, if they've got some questions, we'll bang those out, and then we are good. What's the time in there? Okay, so, um. Where are we? Chizora looking like an African politician, is he? I haven't really seen it. I haven't seen that picture. How many? What's this here? Boxing Pinnacle. Um, let me take care of Boxing Pinnacle. Where is, he? Where is he? Let's get him on up out of here. Okay, so that's taken care of. And uh, let's uh, see what we got. Heinrich Smith says Chisora deserved a rematch with White. Um, he well, he's, the, the, he's had a rematch, hasn't he? He's had a rematch. You mean a trilogy? Um, he was winning their fight until the White left hook. You're talking about a trilogy. You really want a trilogy? You really want a trilogy? That, that, that didn't need a trilogy. I don't think it requires a trilogy. Um, don't think so. Yep, yeah, I've seen that, and uh, boom, they're gone. Uh, thank, thanks for pointing that though, uh, Marla. Thank, good looking out, good looking out. Uh, Marlene fought better than Vladimir Klitschko against Fury. Um, what was that? Otto Valin fought better than Vladimir Klitschko against Fury. Yeah, but he's left handed, he jumped around in and out. Uh, Fury had the cut. You know, you can't go by that. Yeah, but true. Yes, 100%. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. And we come to the last question. We come to the last question uh, from Jay Perez, who say, do you think that Loma will retire early or late? How many years more do you see him fighting? It, it depends. It depends. We mm. know he doesn't need the money because he's not, not a spender. But um, it depends. I could see him fighting. You know, he's only 14-1 and one as a pro. He's only had 15 fights. If he fights twice a year, he fights three more years. Uh, that's six more wins. I could see him getting to 20-1 and one and packing it in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think he's about 33, 34 now. Something yeah, like that. 33, something like that. He's like the same age Crawford is. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. So those guys, got a couple. I think they got a couple of years max. 36. Yeah. 34, 35, 36, something like that. A couple of years, max, and those guys are out of here. Um, so they're going to make hay while the sun shines. 
get the best fights in right now. Crawford will last longer than Lomachenko because he didn't have any as many amateur fights. He didn't have 400 amateur fights. Also, Crawford's a puncher, mm. and he doesn't rely on, on his boxing ability as much as Loma does, which is reflexes and quickness. So I, I'd say Crawford lasts longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So, Rick Glazer, we've come to the end of the show. Everybody's got their questions in. Everybody's had their questions answered. Um, is there anything else that you um, had in mind? Any any boxing news that came to mind? No, just uh, yeah. I understand that um, I understand that uh, Fury. I mean, sorry, um, Joshua and Pulev, November twelfth at the O2 Arena. Yes, yes, yes. Um, to be honest oh, with I'm you, sorry, December twelfth, December twelfth, O2 December. Arena. Uh, yes, O2 so, Arena. Yeah. Um, really, really and truly, those fights coming in December. I'm not really talking about it now because I really don't know. I, it's a really the atmosphere now is that you you get it when you see it. You get oh, it. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I get it. But I'm just announcing something. I'm just saying something that I found out yesterday. That's all. Yeah, yeah. That's all cool in the gang. That's all cool in the gang. But I, I really don't want to get my hopes up. Um, although, although I do believe we're going to see the Dillian. I mean, we've seen big fights. We've seen Dillian White versus Povetkin. So you know, credit to credit to Eddie Hearn. He's made he's made it happen. I don't think there's any reason for us to doubt him if once he says the date's on, once he says the fight's no, on. Listen, Eddie's a great promoter in the UK. Mm. Mm. Leave it like that. Yes. Raf, till yeah. next Wednesday, four o'clock Eastern, nine o'clock in the UK, one o'clock on the West Coast over here. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, thanks, everybody. It's been fun again. Uh, number 24 next week. Wrap up. We're, we're getting close to our, our 20, 20, you know, we're getting, getting pretty close, close there, Rap. <laughs> we're getting close. We're getting close. We're getting close. Rick Glazer, much appreciation. Rick's details are down below. Uh, smash that like and smash the subscribe button. Follow Rick on all forms of social media. Link in the chat. Rick Glazer, see you next week. Thanks. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, and Freddie Mars comes through uh, with another. Oops, where's my manners? Another super chat dominator uh, comes through. Much appreciation, much appreciation for all the donations. Um, uh, Lisa Bales donated earlier, and uh, now Freddie Mars comes through as well. Um, so that's excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to get through. I'm going to go through a few of these comments here. As a matter of fact, hold on. Let me just clean up the chat. Let me see if there's anything. Excuse me. Let me see if there's any anything that needs to be cleaned up, taken care of in any way. Um, what's going on here? What's going on here? What's going on? Anything. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Okay. That seems appropriate. That seems taken care of. I don't think there's any any further housekeeping. No suits, do you think? No lawsuit. Well, yeah, I think uh, Rick spoke about that earlier on in the show. So when you catch the replay, um, that has been discussed. Um, Lisa Bell says, great show, Raphael and Rick Glazer, 100%. Much appreciation. Lisa Bales. Lisa Bales. Um, where are we? Where are we? Heinrich Smith says, sleep well. Yes, indeed. Um, but make sure... You smash that like button before you leave or else you won't sleep well. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and hit that share button. Hit that share button. What's this down here? Okay. Jay Perez says, thanks, Rick and Rafi. Great show. 100%. Appreciate your time, Rick. Yes, 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 says the Philip Carl Roberts. Yes, 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 says the prudent man. Just jumped in. Just jumped in here. We've got a couple of minutes left. 
we got a couple of minutes of the time slot left. So what I'm thinking is, is there something that I wanted to touch on moving forward to December target day? Is there something that I wanted to touch on that I have not yet done? Um, okay. And I'm pretty sure there is. So let me go. Let me go to my backup, backup list. Let me see if there's something that I want to talk about that I haven't touched on yet. On amazing physical shape. Yeah, I think I'll touch on that one. Hold on. What's going on here? What's going on here? What's going on here? Do I touch on this? Huh. Huh. Okay, that's interesting. Um, what we got? Lopez and Lomachenko's reign. What we got? Okay, this is interesting. It's very interesting. Okay, so Sheffield is to stage Dennis Hobson boxing. Um, is to stage the world's first boxing drive through So it's a drive-in. No, it's not a drive through it's a drive-in. So what they get, Dennis Hobson's going to be doing in Sheffield is that he's going to literally have, literally have a drive-in. Remember those, remember those American films? Remember you know, those American films, oh, the comfort of their homes, when they used to, I don't know, the 50s or the 60s, when they used to have drive-ins to watch the movies. Well, Dennis Hobson is proposing, well, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. What's well, uh, Dennis Hobson, however, may have the answer after an announcing that Tommy Frank and Kyle Yousaf will contend for the vacant British flyweight title in a car park just outside Sheffield Arena. In the car park outside. Yeah, well, actually, in the car park, car park outside Sheffield Arena on the 20th of November. So they've got the arena, but they're not going to have the fight in the arena. They're going to have the fight in the actual arena car park. Um... And I would imagine they're going to have, obviously, the big screens, naturally. Naturally, they're going to have the big screens. So everybody should have a perfect view of the action. So that's an innovative, innovative way of doing things. The world's first drive-in. I determine it. Drive-in boxing show. Okay, I think I've got a couple of other topics there, but I think we're going to leave those for videos. Going to leave those for videos. And okay, what else did I want to say? Um, it would be great to see AJ in action again. Yeah, it would be. Um, really and truly, really and truly, I'm not even really thinking about December right now. I mean, December for me, December, December. What are they talking about? They're talking about they're talking about Fury Wilder in December. So really, I don't know. I think I'm looking more forward to the Fury Wilder thing. Um for some for some reason. That kind of well that's 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 the bigger fight, isn't it? Is it the bigger fight? Which is the bigger fight? It's the bigger fights for the double what? Huh, why is it a bigger fight? I guess it's a bigger fight because is it a bigger fight? I'm not even sure it is a bigger fight. It just seems Fury Wilder just seems like a bigger fight. But um Joshua Pulev, they're fighting for more belts, but I don't know. I guess I guess with Wilder being an ex champion, it looks like it feels he has a feel of a bigger fight. But when you actually analyze it, I don't know. When you actually analyze it, I'm not sure that it is a bigger fight. It just seems like a bigger fight. What's going on there? Oh, yeah. Let's get out of there. 
Yeah, they are, don't need no distractions right about now. Don't really need no distractions. Um, yeah, for some reason, to be honest with you, I'm I'm just looking more. I'm looking more at the the Fury Wild. It's just more intrigued to it. Fury Wilder three. I'm more intrigued. I'm more intrigued. Like I read before, I read I read a little bit of the article or I raised the topic that. Um, Deontay Wilder apparently, allegedly, is looking in a great shape. And I can't help but think, I can't help but wonder, can Deontay Wilder shock the world? Can Deontay Wilder shock the world? I mean, after all, I mean, look at it, the man was a bronze medalist. We know he's devolved. In my opinion, he has devolved. His game has shrunk because his game shrunk because his right hand worked. His right hand was working for him. He was knocking people over. And um, he had less, I guess he, had, he developed less of a desire to work on his overall game because his right hand was knocking people over. So rather than focus on being a, a well-rounded, complete boxer, he became a right-hand happy boxer. But what if Deontay Wilder turns the clock back, humbles himself, and dedicates himself to being the best boxer that he could possibly be? What if Deontay Wilder dedicated himself? And here's another, here's another element. Here's another element that I have to share with you. But hold on, there's something I need to do. I need to check an analytic, a particular analytic. Let's go ahead and do that. So what's that there? What's that there? Hmm. Okay. 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 Yeah. So, okay, let's stop that. So what if, what if, hold on, let me do that one more check. Let me do that one more time. Yeah, so we're in there. Okay, so what if, what if that happens? What if Deontay Wilder turns back the clock, rededicates himself, applies himself to his craft? Can he shock the world? Can Deontay Wilder shock the world? It's a big question. It's a big question mark. I don't know. Who knows? I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. You have to wait and see. Okay. So, I think we've done it. We've come to the end of the show. Much appreciation to everybody who came in here. Um, yeah. That's done. Job done. What's this? Boom, boom, boom. Okay. So, uh, next live show is going to be Thursday or is it going to be Friday? Are we going to be able to fit one in on Thursday? I don't know. But as you know, it's Boxing Talk with Rafi over here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 p.m. UK time. 4 p.m. on the east. 1 p.m. on the west. Okay. So, Nothing else to say. It's the Raphael Dawkins. Thank you to for everybody who jumped in. Thank you to everybody who smashed the like button, hit that subscribe button, hit the share button, and absolutely thank you to the Super Chat Dominators. It's the Raphael Dawkins. It's the Combat Radio. It's the Ask Rick. It's the like. It's the subscribe. It's the comments. It's the shares. And it is the hitting that bell icon to stay updated with news and notifications. And don't forget about the live shows. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's the Raphael Dawkins. It's the Combat Radio. And we are out. What else is left for me to say? Left for me to say. Tumbling over my words. Nothing left to say but blessed.